guys. So uh, I think that we're talking a lot about uh, this. This whole talk so far has been quite a lot of a downer. Um, and I think it's really important to talk about solutions. Um, and there's one person in our audience tonight um, who's been spending the last several years on working on a solution, and not just a solution globally, um, but a solution right here in Vietnam. Um, so we're going to hear from, from two speakers. We're, first, we're going to hear from Govinda, uh, and then we're going to hear uh, from James. Um, so uh, Govinda, if you could please stand on up here for me. Could I please get one big round of applause for Govinda, please? Uh, Govinda is the founder of Three Monkeys Vietnam. Uh, and, <laughs> and with that, I will hand you the mic, buddy. Uh, let me just slip to it. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Just hold on. Here you go. There you go. Yeah, no, this is, this is it. Just, just touch the button. Uh, I'm not pretending I have the solution, though. But, uh, but um, wait, how does that work? You just touch the screen. Like this? Yep. Um, yes, I can you read it like some personal stories of deep concern and hope about the future of the natural world, planet. Um, I will jump straight into my presentation. So, uh, if you have, please, if you have questions, just write it down. Uh, otherwise, I lose track of my own story. And I'm happy to answer at the end. Um, but I will let you talk for sure. Um, actually, I will ask you a question. Does anyone know who this woman is on the right? Yeah, yeah, Jane Goodall, and um, she's kind of a, a hero for, um, kind of a Marvel uh, hero, but then for conservation, and um, especially when I was younger, she has always been, like, you know, a great source of inspiration for me, um, and, um, you know, like, I read many of her books, and she got pretty famous uh, because um, she was one of the first to describe, um, you know, that animals, you know, are pretty, you know, complex um, you know, beings, uh, they're able to be happy, sad, they're able to even like create clans and, and make war, and then even have like culture, depending on which clans um, they have, they use different tools, etc. So um, she, she got pretty, she did pretty like groundbreaking studies, and I think um, uh, later on she got really famous for that, and um, she, she used her popularity later to raise her voice and be a voice for, for, for animals, mainly for animals. Um, so she made me dream to, to be myself, like uh, somewhere, you know, in the rainforest and, and, and be a biologist and, and study monkeys in the wild. And so I eventually started to study biology myself. And uh, when it was time to study, you know, to, to do my own uh, research projects, and uh, guess what uh, I, I studied? Well, not monkeys, this weird creature. Uh, you know, life does not always ex happen as you expect. Um, has anyone an idea what this is? Weird stuff at the front? Yeah, it's SpongeBob. Yeah, it's SpongeBob. Um, so it happened, yeah, I ended up studying sponges for a year. Uh, I don't know how that happened, but um, it's, uh, this specific sponge lives um, on coral reef, um, uh, on coral, deep sea coral reef, because also in Europe, um, we have also a great bar reef, but living at 1,000 meter depths, which is pretty impressive. Um, so I got lucky enough to go on expedition um, for two months. Uh, that was the reason why I chose the project, actually. Um, I thought it was pretty cool. And you see these beautiful reefs, mainly actually they're white, but they're a great habitat for all kinds of animals and fish. And, um, you know, it was really exciting to be there. But it was also interesting to see that, um, you know, many of the scientists on, on, on the vessel were actually had a pretty, you know, their heart pretty broken because most of the dyes, this is actually what we would see, a complete, like, you know, rubble landscape, like a moon landscape. And uh, for me, you know, I, I learned about environmental disasters, you know, during my classes, but it was the first time I said, wow, this is pretty fucked up, that we did even manage to destroy, you know, ecosystems that live 1,000 to, to 6,000 meter depths. I thought that was unbelievable. Um, and um, the main reason is because we overfished, actually, um, the, the, the upper layer uh, of, of the ocean. And then um, fishermen developed technologies to actually start to fishing, you know, um, up to 1,000 meters using these big trawlers and doors and, and scraping the, 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 the bottom of the ocean, um, destroying everything. Um, including their own future, because they don't realize that they're destroying, by destroying the reef, they're also destroying, you know, the nursery for, for all these animals and why they rely on fish. So that was a pretty, you know, sad um, experience, but also interesting, um, enriching. When I finished um, my, um, 
my, my degree, I, I, I thought it was time to keep traveling. And then uh, I, I went to, to Mexico, Vamos a Mexico. And uh, um, there, eventually, I, I ended up uh, working for, for two years um, with um, these people say it's an ugly fish. I mean, the one on the right. Um, but um, I think it's a really pretty amazing fish. Um, it's coming from the Amazon. Um, it is, uh, it has, uh, it's like a machine. It's, like, it's able to crawl on the ground. It's able to move from one pool to the other. Um, it has a skeleton. You cannot get through it with a knife. It's so hard. Uh, it has primitive lungs. So it's almost indestructible. And uh, with the pet rate, um, they exported the fish actually um, to South Mexico. And um, I remember um, that the fishermen, where I was, the fishermen in the village where I was working, um, they were telling me the story that they saw the fish, um, you know, for the first time uh, along the stream. And um, they were telling me that um, they saw this poor fish. They said, oh, poor fish, you lost. What are you doing here? They put it in a bucket in the middle of, middle of the village. And they were watching it. And they said, oh, well, poor fish, we will put it back into the stream without knowing that this would become their worst nightmare because this fish doesn't have any prayer. So it started to really reproduce like crazy. Um, and um, the problem is that it has, it's full of spines destroying the fishing nets. Um, it is, people don't really know how to consume it. Um, it doesn't have much meat. So they ended up like fishing it. And then, the, you know, everywhere in South Mexico, you see these fish on the riverbanks, which creates also, you know, health hazards and, and things like that. So, and the whole fishery collapsed with it, um, with also deep socioeconomical issues like you know, people losing their jobs and become alcoholic, and it's pretty, like, fucked up, actually. Um, so, but um, what was interesting for me also, it was like, I, I got pretty fascinated by fish in general, so I kind of let go of my monkey dream, and uh, I moved down to, to Australia, um, and, um, and there I, I, I eventually got involved in a, in a four-year project um, in the Great Barrier Reef, um, and... Um, Initially, I wanted to study sharks because I thought they were cool, but I ended up working like with these little tiny baby fish on, 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 on the bottom. And I studied actually the, the effects of, of climate change on, 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 on fish in the Great Barrier Reef. Um, and what's interesting about fish is that they're cold-blooded, like many other animals. So, um, you know, like any small change in, in the environmental temperature in the water will dramatically affect the body temperature of the animal. So even one or two degrees has a big impact on the energy, energetic balance. And um, this has really cascading effects on you know, how, how, how they feed and how, how predator prey um, interact with each other. And I could talk about hours for that, but I will skip that part. I think the really interesting part here is that um, when I finished uh, my project in 2016, something pretty um, a stu well, crazy happened is uh, in April 2016, um, you know, scientists predicted that, um, you know, the accumulation of um, the El Nino, I don't know if you guys know the El Nino, is a hot stream. Yeah, it's a hot stream, cyclic stream that goes through Australia, um, you know, every seven years, two years, it depends. And they predicted that in 2016, abnormal combination of uh, climate change induced high temperatures and these hot streams would completely destroy the coral reef, actually. And nobody believed them until it really happened. It really happened in April, in two weeks' time, it completely, the, 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 the hot water completely cooked the whole reef. And eventually, we lost 50% of the reef. Um, and uh, I remember my mom told me, like, oh, like, Australians, they cannot take care of their reef. But I told her, everything is interrelated. Every time I travel to see you, the other side of the world, I'm destroying one, maybe one square meter of the reef myself. I'm contributing to climate change. It's a very complicated issue. But it was really, like, kind of depressing to see. Um, so when I finished my project, I... Um, I, I, you know, I was kind of a cross point of my life, and uh, like many of us, you know, I started to backpack and uh, to find myself, let's say, um, <laughs> and then I, I, I started to travel in Asia, and I ended up for some, I don't know how that happened in, in, in Vietnam, and eventually it happened. My, 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 my dream as a kid, 
I ended up working in the Endangered Plant Rescue Center for a year in, um, in Nimbin. I don't know if you guys have been there, but it's a pretty amazing place. They, they rescue primates from the illegal wildlife trade. And um, it was really interesting to, to, you know, interact with these animals. And um, I don't have really much time to go into that. Um, but, um, you know, it, it was really interesting to really delve into that world. And, um, but also, again, pretty depressing to, to realize that, you know, Vietnam is, has 24 species of primates, which is, like, amazing. It's a hotspot of biodiversity for primates. Um, and, but unfortunately, uh, we lost in 30 years 90% of the populations. And we got even to extremes that, for example, at the bottom on the left, um, the Katba Langor, there's only s like there were thousands of left in 30 years ago, and now there are only 70 left. 70. And they can only be found in, in, in Katba. Same story for the two others on the top. They only be found in Vietnam, and they could completely collapsed. And um, I can go in, into depth into that, but I think... Um, you know, I skipped that part, but as you can know, like pet trade, you know, destruction of the habitat, um, you, know, uh, you know, traditional medicine, all these things has contributed um, to, 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 the, to the extinction, actually. Um, so, so here, this slide is just a general slide to sh show, give you a quick overview of the main threats on, on biodiversity. And um, uh, I think uh, all of you have different, have witnessed it, like during your life, like all kind of, uh, you know, um, you know, threats to biodiversity. And, and everybody has examples. These are a few examples, um, and we all know that it's pretty. The situation is pretty bad. And actually, recently. Um, about a month ago, WWF published a pretty respectable report um, um, uh, showing that um, like using uh, the, the Living Planet Index by using a standard, the year 70s, um, as 100%, well, in 30, 40 years, we lost 60% of it, which is crazy. Um, it's almost like if you, you know, all these animals took millions of years to come on this planet. And if you, you know, put it as a reference, 24 hours, um, we managed to destroy it in a few seconds. You know what I mean? So it is just, it never happened almost in the history of uh, life on this planet that animals disappear so quickly, especially due to, you know, another organism, in this case, um, humans. And so we are a very special generation, actually, I think. Um, also, this graph is also an interesting one. Um, you can see on, on the, the purple graph on the top is um, the human population. And when was my grandpa was born, there were about 2 billion, 2, 3 billion people. And when I was born, 3.4 billion. And today, you know, um, three like, decades later, um, we are, you know, doubled, more than doubled. And you can see uh, the green line is the extinction. Uh, I get back to this. Yeah, this is one of the parts, yeah? Industrialization, um, health, and things like that, you know, better medicine. But anyway, you can see that extinction rate really increased. There is a correlation. Um, so I think, um, you know, I think, yeah, you can see that there is definitely uh, a correlation between human populations and, 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 and extinction. So that means maybe we use, maybe probably use more condoms. Uh, or, uh, and I, but I think still that there is a way to kind of like, you know, decrease this heavy slope uh, by changing, you know, our behavior, uh, our behavior. So, um, well, I don't never know what, what kind of speech, um, you know, we need to give to convince people to wake up and that it's really time to, you know, we, it's really time to start today to, to make a change. I don't think people realize that, you know, we, we, we're part of nature and that actually um, we rely on it. Um, normally there is, um, I don't know how to skip maybe this, like the next slide here, the next picture here, um, but normally you would see like a Tarzan jumping here. Um, but, yeah, I can't see it here. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a cool picture, but it's, it's gone somewhere. Um, yeah, I don't know how you do that. Um, but um, I also want to tell the story about, um, I think that also people need to realize that everything in nature is... Um, you know, interrelated, and by destructing just part of it, it's like this game. I don't know the game, like with wooden thing that you take out, the jiggle game of, and the whole thing collapsed. 
Yeah. It's the same story. If you take one piece off, the whole thing can collapse. And I love this story about the wolves of, of, of Yellowstone. Um, you know, they, they disappeared from Yellowstone, and then eventually, thanks to hard work of biologists, they got reintroduced in Yellowstone. And what happened is that these wolves start to chase uh, the deers that are living in Yellowstone. So, you know, these deers didn't have any predators. They were overpopulated, right? So, so they start to chase them away. And um, what happened is that the vegetation this gives space to the vegetation to grow again and all these root systems start to stabilize the river systems and all of a sudden the water start to stream again so it's amazing to see that how you know wolves start led to streaming you know to to rivers to flow again and 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 provide water to thousands of different species including humans right and i think that many conservationists they try to convince people to take care of nature by saying hey if you take care of nature you know Nature will kind of provide you a service, something like that. They will give you water, clean water, etc. Um, so I think that's one of part of the reason why I'm so passionate about um, uh, nature. But I wonder, I also wonder myself, like, there's something deep inside me that really pushed me um, to really wanting to, to dedicate my life to, to that. And, and I think it's a story about uh, compassion. And, um, you know, we're all humans and we try, to, we're so proud of our big brains, but I think there's part of a brain that we're not using enough, is the compassionate part of our brain. Um, and, um, you know, compassion, I think, is something amazing because, um, you know, we're able to some extent to feel our own pain. Um, but what about, like, you know, um, you know, transcend your own ego and understand the pain from the perspective of another being, which is not an easy exercise to do. But I think, like, as humans, uh, you know, I think all of us, to some extent, if we practice that exercise, we can do it. And I think all of us, you know, we feel compassion for our close relatives, for sure, for our father or mother or even close friends and strangers even actually many people still struggle with strangers but we still relate to humans right but what about animals um, you know monkeys they they closely related to us I think still many of us can understand that uh, primates they also you know can feel love and they can also you know be happy and sad etc um, and um, what about um, and unfortunately, I can, th this picture, isn't, there's another picture next to it. Um, but uh, what about like other animals that do not have facial expression, like mammals, like birds? We see them every day in the city. Do we ever stop and watch them and, and think about what kind of life they have in that cage? Um, you know, like, it's a good exercise to do, I think, like, to, 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 to have compassion for these animals. And, and if you want to even bring it to another level, what about feeling compassion for beings that still not not yet exist on this planet, the future generation that still has to come. Do we want to leave them, you know, the, the, the earth like a public toilet uh, in a train station, or do we want to give them, you know, all the chances to live a happy life with, with clean water, clean air? What kind of choice do we want to make? This is also a story about compassion. Um, and also you can even bring it to another level, like compassion for the rivers and the mountains. Um, you know, they, they're not like living, but they also provide so much life to this planet. Um, so I think that um, you, you may wonder like what, oh, that's a shame. I cannot see the picture, but that's okay. I will do it without it. Um, yeah, there's one more picture. Yeah, um, there's one but I think I will do it without a slide but I think like you, I, I don't think that you need to go to the Great Barrier Reef or, or, or save monkeys the other side of the world to really you know have a greener footprint to some extent you know I think that by being the change you want to see in the world and by changing small habits in your daily life you can already have like do a massive you know positive you know impact on this planet um, and I think to me you know even passively you can take actions to me like for example you know like start to reduce like the meat you eat I mean uh, we had many times this chat and also recently in, in the vegetarian session about you know um, veganism etc and I, I only became two years ago you know vegetarian so you know it took also me a while to feel that compassionate feeling I had also to train it over, over, the, over the years but I, I th I'm now really convinced that you know stopping eating meat is part of the solution and you can live I've met so many people that live a healthy life 
just eating, you know, veggies, uh, etc. Et and on top of that, you know, uh, you discussed it with climate change, you know, the farts of all that cattle has actually even a bigger impact than all the transportation system, right, um, in, in the world. Also, you know, all the, 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 the water and, and the energy and the proteins that get lost if you convert from vegetables to, to meat, it's unbelievable. And on top of that, what about all the cruelty that goes with it? You know, um, if you think about, you know, before we were hunters, um, and fair enough, if you kill a happy animal, that's okay, but these days, it's unprecedented. It never happened in the story of life on this planet that we cage animals for all their life and then we kill them. So, some stuff to think about, I think, that, and you can easily do it, I think, by replacing, you know, your knife by a fork. Right, um, and um, and also think that you know people say oh there's also misery for hum humanity and things like that. But I still think that you can you know easily help an old lady to cross the road and still be a vegan, right? I think no. So another thing I uh, said uh, uh, easy to do. Everybody knows like you know um, reduce, reuse, recycle, which is you know. But another good one is also refuse. Right, um, and 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 that's also a good one. And I, I I feel ashamed to say I've been here for three years in Vietnam and I still don't speak Vietnamese. But there's one sentence I'm proud I know is like Hong Lai Tu Milam, no plastic bag, um, and 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 it works. Like no, and and I think that's like you know, and I think somebody's gonna give some key sentences later, um, you know, and and I think that that's good. Um, so I think these are things that we can do, you know, like refuse. And straws, also straws. We don't need straws. We're not like, you know, old people that need little straws to drink. We can drink without straw, I think, you know. Actually, straws is one of the most encountered items on the beach, right? And it has a tremendous effect on, 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 on wildlife. So I think this is also one thing that we can refuse passively take action to some extent. Now, if you want to bring to another level, and I'm getting to the end of my, my presentation, I promise, um, if you want to take it to another level, you can actually start to take actively actions. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people, uh, like in this room, uh, like James and, 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 and John and all that get started, you know, as individual, you know, initiatives and look, you know, like this room, look like this room, you know, uh, you know, pretty successful. Um, you know, so you, you can also take yourself uh, initiatives if you want. Uh, you can join uh, purely as a volunteer an existing group or you can create your own group. Um, I'm pretty proud to say that, you know, with one of my close friends, uh, we, we created uh, our own group, uh, Three Monkeys. Um, actually, I'll tell you quickly the story. Uh, I arrived three years ago and I saw these two macaques along the railroad and uh, I felt so sorry for them. And uh, we, my, me and my friend, we tried to do everything to rescue them and eventually they got confused. Confiscated, they got translocated to in Soxon Wildlife Rescue Center, and um, and then we thought, hey, maybe we can, you know, create a group of like-minded people that wants to join us and and do all kind of, you know, environmentally friendly initiatives um, in Hanoi and, and around Hanoi. And uh, so we said, oh, we create a group called Two Monkeys, referring the two of us or the two macaques here. But then we thought, no, we're going to call it Three Monkeys because everybody can be the third monkey and join us on that, you know. So eventually it ended up to be Three Monkeys. Um, and then, you know, we, we started to do small events and slowly, like, you know, quite a lot of people start to join us. And actually we created a whole community of people. We went, uh, you know, to Soxon so many times. And it's actually, it, it's useful, but it's also great fun, you know, like to meet like-minded people, etc. And uh, also, we, we organized like uh, exhibi uh, exhibitions about wildlife, uh, attracted so many people. And, uh, and last weekend, we got invited eventually by, by the British Embassy to contribute to the Inspire Me Festival on Huang Kim Lake. And we had our own little boots, and uh, it was so much fun to, to, to you know, play with the kids and, 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 and really, like, you know, emphasize on education because I believe that it was interesting because many of the kids, they didn't even know they had monkeys in their country. And I believe that, you know, um, people can only love what they know and what they learn. And, and they can only, you know, protect what they love. So this is what I, I believe that, you know, education is also key, the long-term, you know, um, solution. So um, I think that I get to the end of my presentation. I, don't, I didn't hope I didn't stretch it too long, but um, I hope, like, yeah, this is my, my biggest wish, that eventually, you know, we, we will find, like, a more compassionate, um, caring relationship with nature. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you.